Good morning. My name is Ray. I'm with Team Steam. This morning I'm here at Flash Industrial Painting and I'm going to be doing a little work out front. This is a grill that we got from some relatives. They got a new grill and they gave this to us and we used it up, finished it up. And before I ever started filming, doing anything for YouTube, I took the top off and we got rid of it a while back. There's really nothing that I could think of that I could do with it. But we did save the bottom and now we're going to turn it into an outdoor kind of service area. Okay, so I had the boys pull these boards out of the pallets. They just cut the ends off with a, with a skill saw and then um, ran them through a planer, although that's not necessary. I don't even own the planer. Um, my son-in-law owns the planer and he loves woodworking, so he voluntarily ran them through, but you don't need to have a planer for this job. Uh, it, it made it easier for us, that's for sure. But anyway, um, these are the boards and then what we're gonna do is cut them to whatever lengths we have to, to make sure they're good and staggered by at least six inches. And we're going to line them up in here at least six foot long. This one, this is, oh, about six, six foot, six inches right now. And we're going to do it in a big kind of rectangle. And uh, we'll lay them all out there and stagger them and, and see how they look. And we're putting the side that is going to go down up right now. And so we're going to have the bad side up and we're going to glue them all together. That way the side that we sand and finish will be the good side um, once we get it flipped back over. Now I've got this uh, panel all assembled and it's oh, about 26 inches wide and about 6 foot 3 inches long at its widest and longest points. If you wanted to average it out it'd be about that. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and begin the process of gluing it all together and clapping it all together. All right, so I've got this all sanded down and I've got a design sketched into it and I think it's pretty darn close to the one I'm gonna go with. And so I'll show that to you and then I'm gonna show you a technique for being able to stain with a certain amount of precision across the grain of wood. Okay, here's the design. You see the flames coming down. These flames here are gonna be stained in dark. This center flame, this kind of backlit flame will be in wood tone same with this and this outer flame will all be in darker stain along with these logs down here All right, so now I've got my uh, my stain on here. You didn't get to see the whole thing because I wasn't paying close enough attention and my battery went dead part of the way through, but um, got all the stain on here. We still got it masked up. Now it's time to uh, go ahead and unmask it. Now, as you can see, I had to be very precise when trying to put stain inside of this eighth inch tape. And as you can see, in some spots, I got outside of it. A couple spots here. There's a few throughout the project. It's not too bad. But the way you take care of those is once you get that uh, peeled up off there, you just go over that with some sandpaper very lightly and they'll disappear. And then you're free to do whatever you're going to do with the rest of this wood. So that, that's not permanent. But anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll unmask that and see that line. Look how sharp that line is. That's every bit as sharp as any wood inlay job would ever be. See that? 
That's about all you can ask from wood. But if you get your wood super clean like that, nicely sanded, and then use this vinyl tape, or you can scribe it. You, I scribed part of it, but uh, I prefer to use uh, vinyl tape because it's quicker and I can make smoother curves with it. because uh, scribing it can get a little bit janky. Going across the different grains of wood in different directions, it can turn out looking a little bit like a constellation. Did you see how clean that is? Now any remaining pencil marks or any uh, smudges or anything left behind by the stain, like that right there, I'll just sand that out. I'll get a little bit of sandpaper, put it on the end of like a screwdriver or something fine, and I'll just sand that out. There's no reason to get uh, too Western with it. There's no reason to gouge at it or use sandpaper that's too aggressive. You see, that's just coming along nicely. See, that's what I was talking about. Now I'll just go around that, not that, that's a nail hole from the pallet wood, but I'll just go around that with some sandpaper and clean it up before I apply my wood sealant to this side. But that's about as clean a line as you can ever expect to find made from stain on old pallet wood. So, as you can see, if you work on your vinyl skills, because I'm not naturally talented in this, laying vinyl takes practice, plain and simple. Now we'll see how these turned out, because this is just paper tape. Paper tape lets stuff under it, but I was trying to be careful. It turned out pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And now we're ready to put the uh, wood sealant on it. All right, so now I'm going to start on the base of the grill, but the first thing I need to do is give it a wash, and I'll show you what I mean. Here's one of the drawers or shelves, <clears throat> and you can see it's just been, I had it stored out, out behind the house in between two little structures there, and uh, it, it just got uh, sand and dirt and mud and everything else settled on it throughout the years. So the first thing I'm going to do is pressure wash it. All right, so now I've got it washed, I've got it inside, it's all dried off. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the remaining doors off and begin figuring out what's gonna get prepped and what isn't. If you've watched very many of my videos, by now you probably suspect that we're gonna be doing some sort of workstation, and we are. Okay, I've got my nearly free board on top of my nearly free stands, and we're ready to go here. We've got the two doors, we got the center, uh, drawer here. We're going to uh, start by uh, pulling the handles on everything and then we're going to go ahead and uh, decide what's going to be sanded, what's going to be fixed. I can see there's a few dings in this and then there's rust showing through, peeking through. If I leave this, this is only going to get worse. So this will only be decent this summer and by next year it'll these will be speckled in rust heavier and heavier with each passing year. So I have to make a few decisions. But either way, we've got some handles to remove and some prep to do. We'll go ahead and pull this top plate so we can pull these two doors. We'll get the handles off of them. 
Again, we've got rust becoming an issue, so we're gonna have to do something with these. So now, when I had this sitting down on the floor, I was wondering why this side here bounces when you move it and this side doesn't. So I flip it on its back and realize they put one extra caster there to hold up that propane bottle, no doubt, but didn't put anything over here, which is why this gap is like this, is because it's been wallowed throughout the years. So to add some stability, a while back I had a creeper like this one, except for it was gray, and it broke out almost immediately. Uh, this one was given to us is the only reason we even still have one like this, but the plastic's so thin that these broke out. So I got rid of the creeper and saved all six of these, used four of them on the cart that hauls that dragon around. And then here's one of the remaining two. And you put that on this piece of plywood and then you put the whole thing under here and the height is the same. So I'm gonna take this set up, I'm gonna put it here, screw it all in place so this side has a caster holding everything up as well. And it was all free. So this side will be supported from day one. All right, so I've got all this prepped, everything's ready. I'm gonna go ahead and blow it off, get it ready for some paint. I've decided on some colors, um, a semi-gloss house paint that's black and a satin house paint that is um, kind of a brown gray. Um, basically the same colors as my house. I think it'll blend into the property well. I think it'll look classy enough and I think that it won't be too eye-catching. I didn't want it to be all super shiny and eye-catching. It's already got the design on top. I think that's enough. So I'll put it in those colors here today and then uh, I can be ready putting this thing together tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, putting it all together. All right, so we got it done. All the doors mounted. Got the, the uh, shelves in it. Everything's ready to go. Had to create a top hinge entirely. There was just no place for it and it wouldn't even drill into the wood. So, but at least it's done. And the whole thing is lagged into the wood back here. So it's all secure. Lagged down in uh, eight different spots, in fact. Here's the uh, shelf that's in there. I went ahead and left all that because there's gonna be a propane bottle among other things in here anyway. So the ventilation's already in place. And we got these. Everything's all painted up. Ready to go. Getting ready to uh, move it outside here in just a minute. Okay, and this is where it ended up. There's where we have fires at least a few times a week, probably tonight as well. There's all those chairs, if you've watched the other videos. Need to find the pad for that one. And here's where it ended up. Real close by, see we keep our wood up off the ground here that we're gonna burn. And it's mostly just scrap construction wood. In fact, it's 90% scrap construction wood. And then uh, that's where we haul it in. It makes its way to there, put it in the fire pit. So this is in a great location. This can hold all of our sticks, all of our marshmallows, a propane tank, everything that we're, I mean, we've got a Frisbee in there. Just the things we keep close by for, for fire time and driveway time, because we play Frisbee and stuff. We just last night, we played Frisbee until it was dark. So this is gonna hold all of our stuff and keep it out of the rain, keep it out of the elements. We make burgers, we do anything like that out here. That's where all the accoutrement will go so we don't have flies all over everything. Put our napkins and stuff in there so it's not blowing away, our pitchers of tea in there so flies aren't all over it. It's gonna be perfect. And it didn't end up, have to end up in a landfill. And now I'm off to see what else I can get into. See you guys around.